Piracy in early modern times is well known in places such as the Caribbean and Mediterranean seas, but more remote areas of the world were affected as well. In fact, one of the largest pirate raids in history took place in northern Norway, bordering the Arctic Ocean. Piracy was more common and well known further south in Europe, but wherever there was merchant ships, the pirates were happy to follow in the wake. When pirates began operating in Arctic sea areas from the end of the 16th century, it was partly because interest in the northern cape route between Europe and northern Russia increased. By using the sea route to Arkhangelsk instead of the land route via the Baltics, one avoided crossing national borders where one had to pay customs. The merchant ships along the coast were often filled with luxury goods from Russia, such as fur and silver objects. They could get a good return on these items when they sold it in places such as Holland and England. It is also said that the pirates who operated off the coast of northern Norway always smelled of fish, as stolen fish cargoes also generated good income. As a result of the increased ship traffic, the pirates had a lot to gain from raids along the Norwegian coast. Local reports to the authorities in Copenhagen told of pirate raids and looting in several northern Norwegian coastal settlements. During this time period, Norway was in a personal union with Denmark, with the monarchy based in the Danish capital. There could be regular clashes between coastal farmers and pirates. The coastal population in these areas became increasingly frightened. In May 1602, a merchant supplying the population of Verda was looted off the coast of Finnmark and was deprived of boats, money, clothes, beer, meat, gunpowder, and many other items. That same summer, a French pirate captain named Defos took over Verda with an English merchant vessel that he had hijacked further south. The English captain and part of the crew were shot and thrown overboard in the harbor of the town. Defos inflicted great harm on the local shipping trade, as well as the fishing industry in this part of the country. These pirates went on the attack against Dutchmen and Englishmen off the coast of Finnmark. The trading vessels were stripped and robbed of their goods and gold. The castle clerk at Vardahus Fortress reported to the king in Copenhagen about the pirates' ruthless attacks. Not even local fishermen dared to move out to sea to take care of their livelihood, and Vardahus' poor population suffered hardship. It was even described in reports that the pirates fired cannonballs over the buildings and houses in the area. Lack of weapons and manpower meant that the Varda fortress could not prevent the pirates from taking over the place, and they were thus allowed to ravage as they wished. The fishing village was at the mercy of the pirates. Oftentimes, the pirates kidnapped local men. Even when these pirates were captured, such as the Frenchman Defos in 1605, it is unclear what happened to the men he forcibly took with him. They may have been forced to work for the pirates, or maybe they were sold. From other places, we know that the sailors and the coastal farmers were captured and sold as slaves. In Algeria, there was a separate slave market. In several cases, King Christian IV had to pay large sums in ransom to free people in captivity. In land registers from Finnmark, there are records indicating fundraising to get hostages released. Even with the pirate Defos out of the way, it was still not safe for people living or sailing along the Norwegian coast. Pirate Captain Jan Mandos, who was eventually nicknamed the Terror of the North Sea, had only just begun his terrible ravages. Mandos and his pirates had their way all over the North Sea, and plundered their way up the coast of northern Norway and all the way to Russia. It is not known for sure where Jan Mandos came from, or what his real name was. He may have been Juan de Mendoza from Spain, but it is also suggested that he was of Dutch or Flemish descent. Some sources believe he was a merchant from Dunkirk in present-day France. Mandos gained a fearsome reputation and provoked strong feared witnesses, and eventually there were terrifying stories written about him. It was believed by some that he had iron spikes and sharp knives that grew out of his knees and elbows. Instead of nails, he was described as having long, sharp claws, and out of his mouth, he breathed massive fireballs. He and his associates were plundering worse than ever before, capturing any trade goods of value, taking hostages, and burning down all the coastal buildings in the king's lands in the northern regions. However, by the summer of 1615, King Christian IV finally had enough from Mandos and his peers. The piracy represented a growing threat to the commercial shipping industry of the time, and significant military resources were deployed to stop the rampant looting and theft. The king sent a well-equipped naval expedition led by the most famous pirate hunters in the Danish-Norwegian navy. With fast sailing ships, they pursued Jan Mandos from the Faroe Islands and up to Verda, until the decisive battle took place in the area between the Barents Sea and the White Sea. Most of the pirates were killed by the Danish-Norwegian navy. 55 of them died after being thrown overboard and 24 of them were shot dead. But some, including Jan Mandos himself and two of his closest accomplices, were transported to Copenhagen for trial. 
Large quantities of valuables were also seized, and at the same time it was noted that never before had such great riches come to Copenhagen. The wealth consisted of chests full of goods and gold, as well as large quantities of cod liver oil. After terrorizing large parts of the high north for 15 years, Mandos was hanged in Copenhagen with his two men on August 29, 1615. During the course of the 17th century, the pirate hunters succeeded in overcoming the pirate-based activities in and around northern Norway. It wasn't until around the year 1730 that the Golden Age of Piracy ended in European waters. 